It's not a perfect video. It is a watch me mess up so you don't mess up. Here, also known as Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am making, yes, another balaclava. Did I just do a video about me making a balaclava? Yes. Is this video gonna be significantly different? Also, yes. About a month ago, I did make a video making this balaclava here, more of a ski mask. I made it this style because I wanted to make it into a hat if it's not too cold, and then, you know, you roll it down if it's colder. This particular one is giving me rob a bank vibes. The one that I'm gonna make in this video is more your grandma from the old country vibes. In the one that I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna give you like a little example of what I'm making. Essentially, it is eight large granny squares sewn together and you put it on your head. All right, editing Michelle here. I actually changed it to seven squares, no longer eight squares. I could still do eight squares if you like, but I think the seven squares look better. Eventually you will see why, so, so just stick with it. I think this one is actually gonna be even easier to tutorial than this one and this one was a giant square with a hole in it and then you uh, sewed it together so if you like that video and you understood what I was saying because again this video wasn't really much of a tutorial it was more of a making it up as I go along and you go along for the ride mistakes were made but in the end it did turn out great this one I really liked it the moment I saw it but I'm like oh new styles I'm like is it gonna like fit in with my wardrobe and then the little voice in my head is like Michelle you are a grandma slash grandpa-esque person who only wants to wear old people clothing. I definitely think the balaclava that I'm gonna make in this video suits my style. So at first I was gonna kind of go with a color theme and I was gonna keep it more like neutrals, warm colors, some pinks, reds, oranges, and then that kind of like went right out the window. This here is um, a majority of the yarn that I'm using. I made this bag out of thrifted material that looks like it belongs on a couch and I would one day love to own a couch with this material. This I did not make on my channel. I made this before I really started committing to YouTube and I think the YouTube tutorial was on with Wendy her channel where she does a bunch of sewing stuff super easy to follow I mean like I made it so anywho this is uh, a lot of the yarn that I'm using I just want to make it with a bunch of random colors have a lot of yarn that I've bought and that I've bought over the years that I've just never used you really want to know oh god if you want to know this yarn here which I have the tag for it there's actually a date 2017 now, this yarn is five years old it's impeccable they no longer use this type of label anymore it's a different label and I've been sitting on it not using it. This video is basically me using up all the yarn that I already own and not buying any. I mean, clearly I have enough yarn for this project. Also, this is one bag of my yarn. I also have two Sobeys bags. These are the other bags of yarn that I have, and I'm pretty sure I have also yarn scattered around my room that I'm not too sure where it is. Got a lot of yarn to go through. I just want something that has very vibrant colors. I don't want anything that's just too plain or too boring. I want, I want it to be fun. I want it to be fun. This color here, here. It's like an off-white and what I'm doing is to make everything cohesive I'm gonna be doing a border with this all the colors inside are gonna be wild and funky and free and whatever they want to be And then on the outside border, it's all gonna be like this off-white to like kind of connect it all together and then when I do connect all the squares together I'm still gonna be using this white and then I think I'm also gonna do a trim around the face like I said I'm gonna be making eight squares and in each square there's going to be six layers I have to come up with five different colors and then of course the six layer is all gonna be that off-white color all right so I think that's pretty much all that I can talk about of me making it so let's get right into this project so the first step is going through all my yarn and picking out five colors that I think look really great together because remember the sixth color will be this white. These are the six colors that I'm gonna use for this square. I like to lay them out like this so I can kind of see how well they go together. I do like to break it up. I do like to have like maybe two that aren't so vibrant as the rest of them. For this project, I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook, a US H8, a pair of scissors, and a bunch of yarn. This part here is really just for anyone who hasn't made a granny square before. If you have and you know what you're doing, then just skip ahead to the part where I attach the granny squares together. Together. But for anyone who doesn't know how to make a granny square, this this is what I'm doing right now. To start off, I'm going to be doing a slip knot. I'm going to be grabbing the tail with my right hand, and with my left hand, I'm holding the working yarn. I'm just going to use my right hand and grab the working yarn here. I'm going to twist, put my fingers through like this. I'm going to grab the tail, still pinching it with my left hand, and just pull through and then just pull tightly, stick my crochet hook in. I already started making them. This is 
the finished product. This is what it's going to look like. I alternated the colors a lot. I still have to hide the, the little ends. And the first step is I'm going to be making this guy right here. For my terminology, I call it like this little kind of petal a cluster. Again, I don't know if that is the correct terminology, but that's, that's what I call it, is this little guy is just one cluster. This whole project is basically just gonna be double crochets. So we just need to make the little center. To do that, I'm gonna chain four. Let's yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And then I'm going to connect it by doing a slip stitch. I'm gonna take my hook, I'm gonna go into the very first chain that I made. I'm going to yarn over and I'm gonna pull through both of these little doodads there. And there we go. That is the center. I like doing these. I don't like doing the magic loops. They kind of confuse me sometimes. Now I'm gonna start making my clusters. So I'm going to chain three, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Everything in this project is just double crochets. It's just all double crochets until I have to connect all the squares together. But until then, this is literally the only step of this whole project. Into the center, where right there is the center. I'm going to yarn over, insert into the center, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. I just did a double crochet. I'm gonna do it one more time, so that's yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. This here is the little cluster. This chain counts as one of the three double crochets because each cluster is just three double crochets. You always have to chain that one to begin with so that way you're building height. If you don't build height, it will be slanted like this. Now I'm going to go to the next petal, but before I do that, I need to chain three. So that's one, two, three. And the reason why I'm chaining three, I'll go back to the one I've already done, is it's this spot right here, like right in here. It's giving that gap so that way when you're building out, you'll have room to make more clusters. I just made this one here and then I chained three, which is technically right in there. And then I'm going to do the next cluster. I'm going to do three more double crochets. So that is yarn over, insert into the middle, Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more. I'm gonna do two more double crochets. Now I'm going to chain three. I'm gonna do three more double crochets. I'm gonna chain three. Three more double crochets. Now that I've done my four clusters, I'm going to chain three again. So that's one, two, three. So you see how this chain is going up? I'm gonna insert it at the top of that three chain that I made at the very beginning, just through both of the top loops like that. This is the part where I add in my second color. To change colors, or how I change colors, I'm going to drape my yarn over my crochet hook and I'm going to do kind of like a, a slip stitch. So I'm gonna pull through all three of these loops, just like that. Make sure that there's enough tail at the end. I'm gonna cut the blue working yarn and then I'm going to tie the two ends. And that's basically how I do that. In the next step of adding our next row, what I'm gonna be doing is, this is where I had done it here. So I'm just gonna chain four like this, and then I'm going to start my clusters in this one, work my way around, and when I get back to this one, that chain that I had made here, I'm going to connect it to the last cluster that I have. Instead of doing three clusters here, I do two and connect it to that chain. That's the chain of three and that fourth extra chain is that gap. So in between all of these, like on the sides, is a single chain, and then every corner is gonna be three chains. Now I'm going to chain the four, like I was saying. One, two, three, four. Then I'm gonna yarn over, and I'm gonna do my three double crochets in here to make one cluster. It's one, two, That's two. That's three. Then I'm gonna chain three because it is a corner. One, two, 
three. I'm going to do three more double crochets in the same corner. That's why you do the chain of three because in every corner you need to do two clusters. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through. That's one corner done. Now, like I said, in between each corner, I'm going to chain just one. I'm gonna go into this corner and do the exact same steps I did here. And then I'm gonna chain one, go into the next corner. I'm gonna chain one, go into the next corner. This is where we connect this chain here. My three double crochets here, I did my chain three, and then I did two double crochets. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count up, so that's one, two, three. Insert my hook through that. So then that way, when it gets pulled through, it's gonna be connected to there, and now it's time to add my next color. I'm gonna drape it over, do a slip stitch through all that, take my scissors, cut the pink yarn, do like double, triple knots. This one here is gonna be a little bit different than how I did this one here where I chained four and moved over and started here, went around and then connected it back here. This one, because there's the gap right here, I'm actually gonna make my cluster just right in this gap. Essentially every other one, you're gonna have to do every other step. For this one, we chained the four, moved over. This one, I'm going to do my cluster in here, but then the next one, you're gonna have to chain four and move over. Then the one after that, you're gonna do the cluster. It's alternating. I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, yarn over, insert my hook into the gap right here, pull through, and I'm just doing my double crochets. So this chain three here acts as a double crochet. If you don't do that chain, it will end up looking like this. This is what happens when you don't chain your three and build your height. It will be on a slant, so the, the chain here is always just to build height. I'm going to chain one, and I'm gonna go into the corner. I'm going to chain one, and I'm gonna go into this space right here and do one cluster. I'm gonna chain one. The steps will repeat themselves over and over again until you have as many layers as you would like. All right, I made this diagram for anyone who needs it. It's just really to show you where you put your double crochets and your chains. If you need to screenshot it, so that way it can help you make this, go for it. I'm gonna keep going around and then I'll catch back up with y'all when I'm here so we can do the next layer. Now that I've went all the way around to attach it, I'm going to chain one so I have that little gap in between here. Up here, I'm gonna count one, two, three, insert my hook and I'm going to add my next color, drape my yarn over, pull through everything because it's a slip stitch, cut the green yarn and then tie it up. I like to do triple knots. This layer, we're doing the exact same steps that we did for the pink layer. Chaining four. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to move into this spot here. Next opening, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, and I'm gonna be doing three double crochets. Exact same process where I'm gonna chain one, do my two clusters with that chain here, chain one, uh, one cluster here, chain another cluster. Go all the way around, come back here, and we'll start the next color. And now that I'm back up here, I did my two double crochets, and I'm going to connect it into this chain. One, two, three, insert my hook, and then I'm adding my next color, which is red. I'm going to be chaining three and making my clusters in this little spot here, just like I did for the green. There we are. This is where I am right now. I'm gonna work all the way around, exact same steps. Then I'm gonna go into the next and final layer. Now I'm at the end of the red. I'm going to chain one, count one, two, three. There we go. All right, gonna add my last layer. If I can find it. Oh, there you are. Off white color. And for the last layer, I'm going to chain the four. One, two, three four, yarn over, and going into here, 
So now I'm going to go all the way around and going to connect this to the cluster that's going to be here. So when I get here, I will turn the camera back on because it's the exact same steps and I don't want to keep showing you going around and around and around. Be right back to do this. I've gotten to the end. I've done my two double crochets and I'm going to connect it to this chain here. Count three. Insert my hook. I'm going to yarn over because I'm done. Pull through. Cut the tail. Yarn over. Pull through. And then tighten. And that is my full square. Each square is going to be the exact same size and here are the measurements if you want to screenshot it. And these are all the different color combinations I made for my squares. If you want to use the same ones, go for it. So here comes the um, not fun part of this project and that is leaving in all the ends and I have um, this many squares and I hate doing this because sometimes I will literally like where are my scissors? Have I already lost them? Great. I don't really want to weave them in because I like, you know, double, triple knotted them. I think I'm just going to trim them. So another way to do it is you take your crochet hook and you just kind of like weave it through a bunch of loops of the same color as your yarn then you loop it over like so and then you just kind of gently pull it through so it's kind of like that and then you can cut your end i take the lazy way out and just do it this way but you can do it this way you can also take a yarn needle and yarn it through and that's kind of the reason why you do want to have longer tails on your project so it is easier to weave it through if you want to see what the yarn needle looks like it's the same thing just going through a bunch of stitches and pulling through to the end. And that's what it looks like on this side and that's what it looks like on this side. Another little trick that I wanna show you is sometimes when you're trying to weave in your ends, sometimes like your needle might be a little bit too long and you might lose the end. A trick that I like to do is actually just take my needle without the end on it and go through all the ones that I wanna like weave my yarn through and then take my end, put it through my needle like that right and then pull my needle through if you do have your ends a little too short and you can't weave it through with your needle because your needles are kind of big that, that's a little bit of a tip and you don't see it anymore and now I just have to figure out how to attach them all together so I finished up closing up all the loose ends of the granny squares I hopefully this is enough what I've seen online, it fits people's head, so I hopefully it fits mine. I have to pick five that are like my absolute favorite because they'll be like here, have one here, and then they'll have one say down here, but I know that the ones that are gonna be on the lower neck are probably gonna be more like squished like this. So I definitely wanna pick my favorite color schemes to go on the top of my head and then the sides where, where people are actually gonna like see them. So this is the part that I'm not 100% sure on. I absolutely love this one. I absolutely love this one. This one's okay. So this I wouldn't mind going on my neck. And this one, this one's okay, but not my favorite. Oh, I love this one. Oh, I really do love this one. This is the problem with making a bunch of different ones that if they were all the same pattern, wouldn't have a problem. I'd be already putting them together, but because they're all unique in their own way, gotta figure out which ones are more unique than others. This one's nice, but this one's nice too. But this one's also nice. All right, so I laid them out here and looking at these, I just kind of want to make it into a blanket because of how cute this is, how I've kind of laid it out right now. This is going to be the top. This is going to be the left side of my head, the back of my head, the right side of my head. And then these are going to be the bottom right here is where my head is going to go. So this is the back. This is going to be around. This is what the squares look like laid out. You're going to have three squares on the bottom for your neck, three squares that go around your face, and you're going to have one square that sits on top of your head. And here are the measurements. The next step is connecting all the squares together. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to connect them down and make a really long chain of them. And I'm going to do it for this part, the mill part, and the top part. When I'm chaining them together, I want to make sure that the good side, so like this is the good side for this one, and this is the good side for this one. I want to make sure that they are together. Where you always start a new row, it lines up. I want to make sure all these lines are facing downwards, taking the same yarn that I used for here, making a slip knot, inserting my hook. Yes, I just watched one of my old videos to remember what I'm doing because I have not had to attach squares in a while. When I'm attaching these together, I want it to have like a really nice seam on the inside. I'm gonna go from the outside loop 
to the outside loop. So you see how this stitch here has two loops? I'm only going to be going in this loop here as well as the back loop there. If you look at this, that's the front stitch, that's the back stitch. So I'm going in the opposite loops. On the one facing me, I'm going through just one that's closest to me and then the one behind it, so the back one, I'm going in the back stitch. Square facing you, front stitch. Square away from you, back stitch. Line them up in the corner and you're doing a bunch of slip stitches so that is just yarning over, pulling through everything. Front stitch, back stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Front stitch, back stitch. This is what it's gonna look like on this side and I like how you can see the lines of the square so it makes it more individual but also they kind of hide the stitching on the inside so I, I just like this because it really gives it definition of like this is this square this is this square here's the line separating them now I'm going to connect all the bottom pieces first when I'm done this one I'm gonna move it over take this attach that attach that after I'm done doing the bottom piece just connecting them making them kind of like a short scarf I'm gonna do my head so the two sides the back and the front I'm gonna first finish this and then I will come back and show you the next steps and now I have to attach the top part this is gonna be the back of my head this piece and this is gonna be the top of the head so what I'm thinking good side to good side stitch this up and then it will be flipped over and then I'm gonna stitch these two pieces together and then I'm going to stitch these two pieces together so it's kind of making a square what I ended up doing was I was originally gonna start in the middle and attach the middle and then I attach the side but I got some clarity and realized that I should start like down like this and then I flipped it over and attached this side and then I flipped it over again and attached this side just with one strand of yarn instead of like cutting it here starting another one starting another one I have a hood that's looking like this okay this this is giving me egg vibes. I look like I have an Easter egg on my head and I think I figured out what the problem is, is that the bottom was only supposed to be three squares and not four squares. And I am not a perfectionist, but sometimes I am and I know myself that if I don't fix it, I'm not gonna wear it. So I'm gonna take off that border I did here and I'm gonna take one of these squares out and then I'm gonna reattach the bottom squares again. Same steps as before, but I've decided to take one of the squares out. I think the four squares on the bottom was the wrong thing. So this is just me making it up as I go along. So I definitely think I'm gonna take one out and then realign it and then restitch it together. New plan, took this part off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach it here and then the other end will attach to here. So I'll have like this kind of opening. So I'll have like a two space opening. I'm gonna attach it, see how it goes. And then I think I'll be able to explain it better when I know what it looks like. Just in case it isn't clear what I'm talking about, because to be honest, it took me a while to figure this out for myself. So I figured if I made a little drawing, hopefully this will help you guys out. Where the two circles are is just, you're gonna have to offset the bottom part from the main part there. So that's why it's moved over a little bit. And I even wrote out the dimensions for it. So it's gonna be about two inches or five centimeters away from the top square, because they're not gonna be aligned. Again, they are gonna be off center a little bit and then I even drew this out hopefully this kind of helps you a little bit more I really not know how to draw it out perfectly the bottom is gonna be three squares the top part is three squares and then you have the one square on your head and then right here obviously is your face opening there's gonna be a square on your left side your right side and the back side of your head and nothing in obviously in front of your face now where I put the two circles right there is where you're gonna have to attach the left side of your head and the right side of your head like the those granny squares it's where you're gonna have to attach them to the neck piece which is gonna be in the middle of your neck you're only going to be connecting about two inches five centimeters of the right and left squares to the front square so then that way your face has somewhere to go I really hope these diagrams make sense to you I just want to quickly go over what I'm doing for here because it's not gonna be the same as this where I was going into like every single one this one what I'm gonna do is because the top is a little bit longer than the bottom part because I need to leave a gap to put my face in over here and, and it's not too big of a difference but what I'm doing is I'm going into every one five times same thing where i go into the front of this one the back of that one loop over and i do this five times 
And then on the sixth time, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to skip one on the hood part. I'm gonna skip a chain, move over, but on the neck part, I'm gonna go into the next one. So I'm not skipping one on the neck part, just on the hood part, and that's every sixth chain you would do. You're going to skip the one on the hood. Here is a, another little diagram for y'all. I'm just showing you where you need to skip on the hood part and on the neck part, you don't skip. Five, skip a chain on the hood, move over, but go into the next one on the back. I'm gonna just continue doing this until I get to the end and then I can connect this end here to this end here. Now what I have to do is connect it back to the middle piece that's gonna go like right underneath my chin. I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna go and connect these two pieces and then come back and connect the hood part to the chin part just so that way these are nice and lined up. I'm going back to the original way I was doing it which is just back to back in every single stitch. And now I just have to connect the hood part to the chin part and then I get to try it on see how it turns out so this is what's looking like honestly I have to say it looks so much better taking the eighth one out was such a smart move on my part even though it took me I think it took me almost an hour to figure out exactly how to do the placement of this like it took me longer than I care to admit I thought this project was going to be easy but if you want to make it you know the mistakes that I made what I think I'm going to do now is I am just going to do I think a single crochet just all around that way like these little edges kind of blend in a little bit better other than that I think this is actually looking really good I really like the fit of it I don't think I'm going to do anything to the bottom because the the bottom is just gonna be tucked under, so I don't really wanna like pizzazz it up. If you wanna do a border, go for it. I'm not, I'm just gonna do a border around my face, so yeah. Final step, hopefully, because I don't wanna do this anymore. A nice little border just around the face area. I'm gonna start off with a slip knot. So I'm gonna insert into both of them. For right now, I'm just gonna make myself a little slip stitch that's just starting off. Go into the next one, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and I'm just gonna go into every stitch and I'm going to do a single crochet that's insert yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two kind of what it's looking like for the border now you can make your border as thick or as thin as you want you can do a scallop border you can do any border you like I'm just gonna do you doing a single crochet I'm gonna go all the way around and when I come back to where I started I will show you how I'm going to end it now that I got to the end I'm gonna cut my working yarn all the way up there yarn over pull through, pull tightly, and then I'm going to tie it in a knot from where I started. Probably should have started it down here. Oh well, whatever. I'm now going to take my yarn needle and I'm just going to weave it in. Okay, and that is what it's looking like. I kind of wish I would have started this maybe in the corner. I don't know. I'm getting real tired. I don't think it's going to matter because it's going to open like this anyways you're not even gonna notice it i just wanted this to be more clean that is it for this project and now i just have to do the try on And the hood is done or hat hood you know i think it actually turned out really really cute i really like how colorful it is i think it is just so stinking cute and then of course you can pull it down like that there's just so many options i'm gonna leave it on because i just think it's so cute the dimensions of the squares will be in my description below also i think i put them throughout the video how much yarn i used i don't know i literally do not know because i was using scrap yarn no more than one ball for each color and even that is an exaggeration you don't even need that much yarn for this i think the off-white color i had half a ball of yarn and i did the whole thing and i even did catching it together you don't need a lot of yarn for this project but unfortunately i do not know how much yarn i used as for how long it took me 
because mm -hmm. I am filming this while I'm making it, it does take extra time because I have to film like the steps, whereas normally I wouldn't be describing every single step that I'm making while I'm like personally crocheting it. When I started the project, I think I made like five squares in a day or like even in like was it in an afternoon I made five squares the squares do not take very long to do honestly I think the most tricky part was me trying to figure out how they all connect together <laughs> I think this project could be done in a day or two depending on how fast you crochet and how easily bored you get of it because sometimes I'll start a project and be like I'm done for it today even though I probably could finish the whole project in a day this did not take really long to do and then the colors of the yarn I used I also don't know because if you saw the beginning of the video I literally had a bag of yarn that I've had forever, the one from 2017, which coincidentally still had the label on it. But other than that, I don't really know the colors of yarn. The only thing I do know is 90% of the yarn is impeccable yarn, and I'm pretty sure they still have the colors. But other than that, I can't really tell you what colors these are because they didn't have any labels on them. Feel free to use the same pattern as me. Feel free to use the same color scheme as me because again, that was another kind of tricky thing. What colors look good together, trying to plan it out that way. So if you're having the same problem I did, definitely feel free to screenshot this do the exact same colors as I did I think they're really cute together another thing I would suggest is I personally think I could have done five layers instead of six layers so instead of say doing like this fifth layer of color I could have just like moved the white layer down and used that as the fifth color and not done a sixth I think it would have fit my head just as good I did end up doing three around my neck instead of the four because if you saw what I look like with the four it just didn't work out because the opening was way too big so I definitely think the bottom part here needs to be a little bit smaller than the top part. That's that. Please learn from my mistakes. That's what this video is for. It's not a perfect video. It is a watch me mess up so you don't mess up. I think that will be it. If you are new to my channel, you like sewing, crafting, but mainly thrifting, why not subscribe? You can also follow me on my Instagram, which is the same fancy dinosaur tea party. I think that is it. So y'all have a good day now.